Okay guys, good morning. Today we're going to talk about mad addition. And this example would be 5 plus 8 equals what? How many times do I have to tell you to be here and focus here, not on your phone? How many times do I have to tell you that? How many? Are you tired of yelling? Teachers shouldn't yell, but it happens, right? Mm -hmm. Are you tired of children listening to you out of fear? Oh, yeah. Do you think everyone should be treated with dignity? Yes. Hey, you there, teacher. Are you tired of walking into other classrooms or even in your own classroom, poking your head in and you just see kids losing their dignity? Well, we have the discipline model right here for you. And you don't have to look any further. Because with the Richard Curran and the Allen Medler's Discipline with Dignity, your students will be disciplined with dignity and lives of many adults and children will be saved. Well, let's begin. Our focus is to establish classroom discipline upon a basis of dignity and hope. We claim those students destined to fail because they don't know how to behave. Let's find some long-term solutions to problems of misbehaviors, which include violence too. The central focus of the wooden, uh, the motto is on helping all students have a better opportunity for success in school through building sense of dignity and providing a sense of hope. The logic, if we solve misbehavior problems, we can save students who otherwise fail in school. Students will misbehave when their sense of personal dignity is threatened. We have to restore the sense of hope with these students. Violence and aggressions which teachers fear can be dealt with effectively. What about the contributions, you might ask? The concept of students' dignity as the cornerstone of effective classroom discipline. The understanding that most chronically misbehaving students have no sense of hope. A systematic approach to discipline based on preserving dignity and restoring hope. Concrete suggestions for dealing with violence, hostility, and aggression. Curtin and Mendeler's uh, suggestions recognize that helping students learn to behave acceptably in its intergalactic part of teaching. In all circumstances, interact with students in a manner that preser preserves their dignity. Do all you can to reinstall hope, success in students who chronically misbehave. Make sure that the discipline techniques you use never interfere with motivation to learn. We need to begin teaching students about hope. Hope that life will be better in the future. We hope it, when hope is lost, they believe there is no reason to try. And if a student regains hope, their behavior will improve. But how do we do that? Well, leaning not only, learning not only to, is learning not only be made attractive, brings success as well. Teachers need to explore ways to redesign the curriculum, encourage different ways of thinking, providing for various learning redesign the curriculum, uh, provide various learning styles and sensory mo modalities, allow for creativity and artistic expression, and use grading systems that provide encouraging feedback without damaging the student's willingness to try. Okay, so what's the answer? Um, well, I don't know, you're the teacher. You see, that doesn't work, not with sarcasm. I already told you so many times, so now you're going to uh, stand at the corner right now. You're not going to work with your group anymore. That doesn't work. Isolation never helps. They go back to doing what they were doing. And then after you're done, you're going to complete this assignment too. How am I supposed to finish all of these? That and doesn't work. That doesn't work. Extra homework or extra assignments don't work when a child is misbehaving. What else can we do besides that? So we know that traditional methods that you've been trying will not work. They are ineffective. Kids are used to that. They have grown immune to the lecturing, the sarcasm, detention, or extra writing assignments or isolation. Let's deal with them with, um, let's deal with the student's behavior is important part of teaching. We know that. And we always trade student Always treat students with dignity. This is essential for a healthy life. Its importance cannot be overrated. 
Effective discipline does not attack the student's dignity, but instead offers hope. Good discipline must not interfere with students' motivation. Students who become involved in lessons cause few discipline problems. Before dealing with misbehavior, ask yourself, what will this technique do to, to motivation? This is the most important one. Responsibility is more important than obedience. What are the consequences for this model? Well, examples would be, if they make a mess, they will clean it up. If they damage a the material, they will have to replace it. And for a timeout, instead of sending them in isolation, you let them know you have chosen timeout, but you may return to the group when you are ready to learn. Always implement a consequence when a rule is broken. Always implement, uh, select most appropriate consequences from the list of alternatives, taking into account the offense, situation, the student involved, and the best means of helping that student. Be private. Only the student involved should hear. Do not embarrass the student. Do not think of a situation as win-lose. This is not a contest. Do not get involved in a power struggle. Control your anger. Be calm and speak quietly, but accept no excuses from the student. Sometimes it is best to let the student choose the consequence. That's how you handle a misbehavior, positively, in private, and calm. The four phase plan for schools. Techniques for dealing with um, people who or students who still want to break the rules. Our schools should have um, or identify the core values that the school wishes to emphasize. Create rules and consequences based on the core values identified. Model the values during interactions with students and staff. And eliminate interventions that violate the core values. School is a place where we solve our problems peacefully, is an example of a core value. School is a place where we protect and look out for one another rather than attack or hurt one another. School is a place where we learn we are responsible for what we do. School is a place where we learn that my way is not the only way. So let's create rules and consequences based on these core values. And it's very, very important that we model with students and staff members. If a, a, we as a teacher are not doing um, what we're trying to teach, they are not going to listen and they will break the rules. Techniques for dealing with violence in the classroom. Teachers should teach the procedures to students and module them in practice. I present to you the six step solution. Stop and calm down, wait a moment, take a deep breath and relax. Think quickly, explore options and foresee what would happen if you see them. Decide what you want to have happen. Decide on a second solution in case the first, the first one doesn't work. Carry out the solution you deem best. Evaluate the results. Have you accomplished what, have, what you hoped? Will you use the tactic again in similar circumstances? Solving my problems. Name your problem. Indicate spe uh, specifically what somebody had said or done. Say what you would like to have happen. Say what, would, what you would do to make things happen as you would like. Make a back, backup plan to use in case the first one doesn't work. Carry out the plan. Learning to have patience. As we grow up, we learn that our needs can always be meet, uh, met when we, we do like that often. We must have to wait. We feel frustrated and angry when we don't get what we, what we want. But we must learn patience. Examples. It requires practice on actions such as walking away from a fight waiting in line with a smile and remaining calm with somebody cuts in line. Using words that work. Do not provoke into ritualization. You can practice saying things that would stop most 
all attacks such as being polite, using words such as please and thank you, asking if you have done something that has upset the other person, apologizing if you have offended the person, planning for confrontations, name five t situations you recall where people got into a dispute. Next to each, write down strategies you think you will bring the situation to come to come close. Practice what you would say and do should um, should you find yourself in one of these situations. Strategies to help teachers. One, write down these things students do or say that you find irritating. Determine why students do these things. What basic needs are they trying to meet or what motivates them? What do you know what do you know now do or when students are doing something that's irritating or things that they're doing on purpose? Are your current tactics effective for problem solving? What response strategies can you think of that address the reasons for the irritating behavior while at the same time modeling behavior consistent with school values? Practice the strategies beforehand and then put them into practice at the next opportunity. And you also have to be wearing an invisible shield. You pretend you are wearing an invisible shield that deflects all bad thoughts and unkind words. It will make you immune to them. You cannot be hurt as long as you are wearing your invisible shield. Okay, so what did we learn today? We learned about mad additions, right? So what's five plus four? Delia? Nine. Good job! Oh my god! We're doing so great today. I'm so happy that we finally um, learned this uh, math uh, problem. I love math. Yay! You will know that this model will work for you. You must always keep the student's dignity preserved. If the student will not do all of their power to protect their dignity, if you do not protect it for them, you must be willing to guard against threatening students' dignity even when they, are, they threaten yours. Dealing with misbehavior is an important part of teaching. Lasting results are only achieved over time. <clears throat> there is no quick fix solution to chronic misbehavior and responsibility is way more important than obedience. You also must learn to wear an invisible shield. You pretend you are wearing an invisible shield that deflects all bad thoughts and unkind words. It will make you immune to them. You cannot be hurt as long as you are wearing your invisible shield. Order now for only $19.99. Order now within the next 10 minutes to 444 and get it for 9 dollars instead of 1999. Order now, please.